An alternative way to approach this problem is as a system of equations. We can still go with those same variables that we used above, where the speed of the bird would be 20 kilometers every one hour, and the speed of the runner would be 4 kilometers every one hour. But we just have to break this down into our two motions. Once again, we are still trying to figure out how far is the bird travel. So that would be the total distance of the bird. So that would be the distance in the forward direction, so distance 1, plus the distance in the backwards direction, distance 2. So distance 1, we know, is the length, and distance 2 would be that, well, length minus position, like we saw once again. But instead of solving for it by writing a bunch of equations like we saw up here, just trying to focus on lengths and like logicing our way through it, we can treat this as though it were a graph. Because once the bird gets down to this position, its motion changes. We no longer have that positive 20 kilometer per hour velocity, starting with that initial position of zero. Rather, we have that negative 20 kilometer per hour velocity, negative because it's going backwards, and then we have that new starting position of 8.4 kilometers, that total length we have here. In this region, once again, we would know that that person would be somewhat further along, and they would still be traveling in that same direction with that same velocity we're seeing above. They would just be at a new starting position. Now, if we want to solve this using our like system of equations and ha having a position time graph, we know that the runner would start off at some positive position, and their position would increase at some constant rate of 4 kilometers per hour. We would know that the bird would start off at that position of 8.4 kilometers, and they would decrease rather sharply. If we wanted to solve for this right here, that would be a time and a position coordinate. And that x, we can plug into that equation over on the left-hand side. Now, the only issue with this is this is not actually what the position time graph would look like for this entire region. Instead, it would look something similar to this, where the maximum position would be 8.4 kilometers, the starting position would be zero. The runner would constantly be increasing their position until they got to that. And the bird, they would start off at a position of zero, and they would qu quickly increase to at that position of 8.4. And then we would, they would just constantly bounce back and back and back, because the bird constantly changes direction whenever it reaches the finish line or the person. But this graph would be a little bit too complicated for us to focus on. So really, we're just going to be setting up a new graph that is literally just interpreting that region and ultimately trying to figure out what that time and position coordinate would be. That's what we drew over here. If we want to go with it in this route, though, we need to figure out what this new initial time would be. Now, the way that we can figure that out is literally just figuring out the amount of time it takes for the bird to travel that original length of position. So, because it's a constant speed, we know that originally our velocity would be equal to our change in position over our change in time, which we can rearrange to be change in time is equal to change in position over our velocity, or the 8.4 kilometers over the 20 kilometers for every one hour traveled by the bird. If we were to figure that out, just type this into my calculator right now, we would say that that means that it would be 0 0.42 hours for when we have that new motion of the bird and that same motion of the runner. But the reason why we want to figure that out is so we could figure out what that y-intercept is going to be. So we can calculate that y-intercept by figuring out what that position would have been after that amount of time. Once again, we can rearrange that equation from up above to solve for our displacement. Our change in time is equal to our velocity times our change in time. 
because we're starting off from a position of zero for the runner. Instead of a displacement, it literally could just be the position at that time of 0.42 hours. So the person runs at 4 kilometers every 1 hour, and if they're running for 0.42 hours, the hours cancel out. And that means that their starting position would be 1.68 kilometers. The reason why this is going to be important is that means we can write two equations. We can write down a function to figure out the position of the runner. They are traveling at that velocity of 4 kilometers every 1 hour times how long they're traveling for plus their starting position of 1.68 kilometers. We can write down a function for the bird to figure out its position. It travels in the negative direction at a rate of negative 20 kilometers every one hour times time, plus its starting position in the second region of the graph, which would be 8.4 kilometers, because it would be starting at the finish line. If we were to plug that in to a graphing calculator, we can figure out what the intercept point would be for these two functions. Now, when I plug that in, that means that they would intersect at a time of 0 0.28 hours. And that would be at a position of 2.8 kilometers. If I were to use that up in this equation up above, we could indeed figure out the distance that the bird traveled. It traveled 8.4 kilometers originally, plus 8.4 kilometers backwards, but it would have stopped after we got that 2.8 kilometers that the person and the bird had interacted at. So 8.4 plus 8.4 minus 2.8 would be 14 kilometers, which is how far the bird traveled. This is another way of solving for how far the bird traveled. We saw the way in the previous video and in the previous example here about how we could solve it by just doing some algebra. But if we want to apply our kinematics and our position time graphs, this would be an alternative way to do so.